There, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to start. So those who are also online, please tell some idea and hint that you are seeing us and everything fine with you and we can start because we are today staying strictly with the agenda because today is a really important day when we do measure the success as a final stage for the project. And of course, we need to know how to measure what matters. And as John Doerr said, ideas are really easy, but it, execution is everything. And it always takes time to win. And regarding this today, you see the agenda in kabada.eu. We are also streamed online and we can be viewed on Zoom. And we are going to stick on the agenda by times. And later on, we'll be able to tell how this is going to happen. And what is really important, in order to have a welcoming introduction, I want to tell you that uh, feel free to join the Zoom. Many rooms will be open when the moderation sessions will be also open. But currently, this is the main room. It's called Conference Hall. This is where everything is going to happen in a hybrid mode. And most of the information, if you get lost, it's kabada.eu where you can find the program. But most important people are going to talk in the, uh, all day long. And today we want to uh, say also important organizatoric skills, uh, uh, organizatoric uh, things. Uh, today, I'm your host. My name is Edward Seksionenko. I am from BA School of Business and Finance and Strategic Consultant, and I'm the first one uh, who is congratulating you coming here for this really great conference and final stage of Kabad project. And I also want to say a quality sign that I'm really amazed by your work. So that's why congratulations for everyone who have done the great work attending and in supporting the project in all means. So big applause to everyone today. And welcome speech is going to be performed by, of course, Rector of BA School of Business and Finance, Associated Professor, Dr. Liga Pesnice. So please. Good morning, good morning, dear conference uh, participants and colleagues. I am happy that BA School of Business and Finance organized this uh, conference and our school 30 years offer uh, high quality business and finance, high education on three cycles, bachelor, master and doctoral. Over these uh, years, we have been focusing on the transnational cooperation, modernizing our study programs, creating double and joint study programs, being a social responsible business school from the very beginning and the last year, supporting refugees from Ukraine. Today, I am really proud that uh, under the leadership of our school, the A School of Business and Finance, and with high commitment of all partners from uh, Italy, Czech Republic, Portugal, Latvia and Lithuania, designed in 2019 European uh, Erasmus uh, plus uh, Knowledge uh, Alliance project, which uh, despite various challenges in successful coming in the result. I strongly believe that as a result of academia and business cooperation, a useful digital tool has been created. The application of the tool in the study process will facilitate the development of entrepreneurial mindset and skills in students and academia. This tool may assist young entrepreneurs and students to put in the practice their innovative business idea. It has also enhanced digital transformation in business and higher education. I wish fruitful discussions and exchange of expertise to further implement, implement the project outcome and keep it all the time updated to be functional. And I would like also to say that it's very important to keep this cooperation, not only for this project, but also in the future, 
because such type of projects are very important for every um, uh, high education institution for everyone in this hall and also in in uh, in distance and uh, at the end of my speech i would like to say a few uh, thank you and the first one is uh, to project the manager janis hermanis for leading this project Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah
uh, this is official title, uh, Knowledge Alliance of Business uh, Idea Assessment, uh, Digital Approach. Then we figure out a few letters and uh, now everybody in uh, our universe know uh, Kabad, what does it mean actually? Oh, of course, also small uh, references to project number for official needs. I also put here. Uh, yeah, my name is Janus, Janus Hermans. I'm here from uh, BS School of Business and Finance. I'm a teacher here. Uh, but no, yeah, mostly here I'm a project manager, a project leader for uh, from this project. A uh, few words about uh, our partners. <clears throat> uh, our consortium is built by nine members. Uh, I'm not telling exactly names, but uh, uh, but in general, uh, we build really great so consortium uh, together with academic parts, uh, several universities uh, from different parts of Europe, uh, several business partners, also representing ICT industry, few professionals. I'm really uh, happy about this. Uh, also some, some uh, consultancy companies, uh, also some very strong uh, uh, financial advisors and finance institutions like uh, one of our partners. Also non-governmental institutions, also impossible because no, this is the way how we uh, distribute uh, our results. Uh, they always have nice networks uh, in Lithuania, in Italy, in China even. Uh, yeah, uh, and, uh, yeah, but okay, well, let's move to my story. How everything began actually yeah this is a point uh five years ago in general five years ago uh we come with some idea uh, i always like to think uh, uh tell idea idea is the first idea is the first i can't remember precise date uh, but uh, it's happened approximately five years ago when we finalized our previous projects uh luckily submitted final reports everything is done and then uh, we start thinking what we would like to do next. Uh, does we have some ideas? And somewhere at some point, somebody say, hey, maybe it would be great uh, to somehow help uh, people who would like to start finally own business. Uh, okay, that's great. Uh, after a uh, few uh, weeks, no, we somehow finalized our idea more specifically, but idea born. And also, no, for this uh, from this point of, from this point of perspective, I'm always talking. Uh, also, imagine uh, somebody uh, is sitting in a very comfortable sofa uh, around in this family, uh, husbands, wife. Uh, children, so grandparents, maybe friends, and some some moment something clicking in your hand. Okay, I would like to start my business finally. I would like to work for myself, and uh, no, then you share your you share your experience, your idea with your friends, family. Uh, but after the question raised, uh, how? To start, what I need to prepare before I start really uh, growing our things up. And uh, no, somebody said you need to write business plan. Uh, you need to take care about finances. Uh, you need to be sure that uh, everything will be fine also after one year, maybe two years, maybe three years. And uh, no, actually, you figure out that you need to think about lots of things before you even start. And uh, no, then you start looking around uh, no, where you can receive some advice. And I hope you come to Kabad uh, and uh, create your plan uh, via our way. No, I will say sometimes it's like Kabad uh, business model, maybe. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, we figured out that uh, for our suits, uh, best uh, thing is uh, submit a proposal uh, to Knowledge Alliance projects. Uh, our first attempt uh, happens in the year 2019. Uh, we failed. We failed. Uh, the first moment, it uh, was really upset. Uh, 
Oh, no, okay, no, we, next, we not succeed, but uh, then uh, in the autumn, we again came together and decided. Uh, not so bad, actually, because very important thing, which actually I learned uh, no, from uh, other project experience, also no, shared with my colleagues somewhere in some conferences. Uh, so if you fail first time, it's great because you received the feedback. Uh, you received the great feedback from agency. I need to say uh, big thanks to agency evaluator uh, because, yeah, uh, when we... Uh, uh, submit next uh, iteration of our project. We take an account lots of things uh, from evaluator part. What does mean uh, in year 2019, uh, we uh, submitted uh, our uh, proposal one more time, and then this time succeeded. Uh, and after A40, after A40, question raised, what's next, what happens next, and uh, yeah, <laughs> three years and few months of hard work, actually. Okay, uh, sometimes uh, as normal, three years is a long period of time. Uh, ups and downs happens, definitely. Sometimes, even from myself, I start thinking who, <laughs> why we are doing such kind of thing, uh, where we are, uh, does we really, is, is possible to achieve some results? Uh, but uh, my colleagues always push me up. And that's is thanks to uh, my team. Uh, sometimes I call to Inga. Uh, and after a few, few, few uh, minutes of phone call, I understand that everything is okay, actually. Uh, yeah. Uh, I like this slide because there I put uh, almost everything what's happened. So, uh, from beginning, uh, from the first kickoff meeting uh, uh, three years ago, uh, uh, creating vision, what we would like to build at the end. Then COVID is coming here. Also, it's important part to you know we can't ignore this. Uh, you no, know, because no, everything is uh, happens online. Uh, actually, till now, uh, I can say that some of our team members I never seen in face. Till now, actually, a uh, few important people, but I never seeing these people in face. Uh, yeah, during the uh, process happens, uh, some amendments we need to submit it. Yeah, some issues we need to resolve. Uh, lots of research works, uh, defining requirements. Uh, then uh, moving to development process. Uh, then testing, uh, debugging. Uh, yeah, uh, Ukraine also playing a role here. Uh, Slava Ukraine. Uh, uh, it was a huge impact. Actually, I need to say from my experience, it was really hard uh, to concentrate on work, especially in the few first months of war. But uh, no, uh, we continue. Uh, we achieved, uh, as it mean, uh, some publications also raised. We are testing. Uh, we have results. We are uh, telling people uh, through webinars uh, and no uh, conferences at the end. Uh, no, I would like to share with you some important numbers from my opinion, uh, just to uh, show uh, scale of such kind of projects. Uh, first of all, uh, in totally, uh, according timesheets, which my partners prepared and uh, submit to me, I counted in total approximately 75 people during these three years are involved. Uh, uh, lots of those people nobody see because it's some uh, accountancy uh, staff members, uh, some human resource managers somewhere, uh, some hidden developers somewhere also, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I actually was surprised. 75, it's a huge number. Okay, uh, some some of people joined just for a few months maybe. Uh, some left our project, it's normal life. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I say huge number. Uh, declared number of work days is close to 8,000. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then I start thinking also from my side, 
I'm looking, I just counted in my calendar from year 2019 uh, till now, how many times uh, our project name is mentioned uh, as mean uh, close to four, four and a half hundred times I had the meetings with you guys. Uh, in different uh, okay, no, for, for different reasons, uh, with different people, but in totally, uh, I'm not expecting actually, maybe not the best idea, but still. Uh, number of lightning codes, uh, thousands and thousands and thousands. Uh, actually, there's more question to our developers. No, I believe not millions, uh, but thousands. Uh, publications, I counted eight. Uh, reports in conferences, at least 16. Uh, one of our team members is close to final PhD. Uh, and main outcome. Okay, one. This is main outcome. Main. We have lots of outcomes, but this is main. Uh, and main outcome, as I end, is uh, structured, web based platform to create your business plan or start off your business on the right foot. Uh, bingo, uh, there we have. Uh, welcome everybody join the, our platform, uh, kabada.ba.lv. Uh, you can create your own plans, you can play with your plans, you can start from scratch, you can uh, share your work with uh, your co-workers, uh, work together, everything is possible. Everything is possible. Another way uh, how we are creating your plan is uh, relatively simple. Uh, we decided to uh, try to avoid uh, from lots of writing things. Uh, you are putting bricks together somehow. You are, we are asking some questions. We are preparing answers. You are selecting your ideas. And uh, at the end, uh, everything is built. Uh, yeah, no, few more slides here. Uh, yeah, we are working also with statistical data. We are serious, we are serious. And uh, as and uh, yeah, plants looks like in the moment maybe something like this. But okay, there is a small bricks uh, which you put together, and uh, some cash flow at the end also rise because you need to understand money is a king. <laughs> and uh, no, uh, if you see too many uh, red cells, uh, this is a red flag for you. Maybe you need to rearrange something uh, and uh, return to your 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 uh, initial stages and think one more time uh, about your potential business. And this is important. This uh, cash flow in this case it's uh, built automatically uh, from uh, information which you give us uh, previously. And also one of our uh, uh, Proud part of our uh, solution. Uh, during the process, uh, uh, we are supporting you. We are supporting you in different ways. And one of the ways is uh, giving uh, some nice, smart advice. Okay, uh, we um, can compete at the moment this famous artificial intelligence chat, which everybody, I believe, knows. Uh, which is trendy now, but but still uh, we also have our solution, our algorithms, how we can help you. And at the end, uh, you're receiving almost ready business plan for, and you can use for your needs. You can go to your finances, you can read, you can change, and you can submit, and actually you uh, can realize. Uh, and users, uh, of course, uh, Main audience is students uh, teaching stuff, not only from universities, but also from school sector. Uh, also entrepreneurs, if they need to validate some ideas. Uh, no, no, actually in general, everybody who would like to start business. Uh, few more numbers uh, I would like to share with you. At the moment, we have approximately 5,000 unique users. And also during the process, uh, when we introduce people uh, with our platform, uh, we are asking for some feedback. And uh, yeah, we are doing some serious work actually here. Uh, and uh, also no, based on scientific approaches. And uh, I just highlighted here a few uh, questions uh, which we ask and which somehow prove 
that we uh, are on the right way. Uh, how much did working on the tool in our platform increase your interest in entrepreneurship? Uh, average score is 5.14 out of seven. Okay, it's not sad, but it's high. Uh, from another perspective, uh, to what extent do you agree that such learning experience, because it's learning experience, uh, you learn to when you create your plan, actually, it's this it's, it's learning tool also, uh, increase your interest in the, uh, in the entrepreneurship, uh, even higher score, 5.4 out of 7. Uh, how high is your intention to become an entrepreneur? Also, interesting question, because we asked this question before somebody knows, about us and a bit later when these people created actually the first uh, own plan. And you see numbers are going up, increasing. Uh, 4.8, 5.13, 5 uh, 5 uh, that's a statistically significant difference. Uh, we run a test which shows, yeah, we have a difference. That's mean we are doing things in the right way. Almost 82% of our you customers, users, so, you know, say that actually they are strongly recommend uh, to use our platform for the developing your ideas. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's uh, relatively close to my, <laughs> uh, my, 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 my numbers. And uh, yeah, at the end of my presentation, I one more time would like to say huge thanks to Mike about the team. Uh, uh, thanks to my closest friends, my closest uh, partners during these three years, uh, Kristaps uh, Leshinskis, uh, Ines Maulutova, uh, yeah, uh, Ennet uh, Kivrinja, who time to time just uh, say, okay, guys, you need to do things in a much proper way. Uh, uh, yeah, it's really helpful, especially from some administrative perspective. Uh, thank you. Uh, I need to say thanks to one of the guys uh, which I meet, I think, most often. Uh, our developer guy, leader of uh, developing team from Vilnius Collegia, Justinus. Uh, yeah, actually, no, we meet sometimes twice, sometimes three times per week. Uh, no, just one time per week. <laughs> but uh, really often, really often during past two years, really often. Uh, I need to say also same things to our colleague, which is not exactly here, because he's participating in another event, uh, Rems Greensteins, uh, leader of our, our IT team. Uh, no. Uh, without him, nothing happens. I need to uh, say things to my colleague, Maris Goldman, is correct, yeah. Uh, because no, without Maris and uh, our brainstorming uh, with together with Christops again, uh, no things not uh, happens exactly how we see. I need to say big things to Yuris. Uh, because Yuris managed to put uh, some lines between different objects, uh, how everything is connected. I need to say a uh, huge thank to our Portuguese colleague. Uh, hi, Dulce. Hi, Luisa. I hope you are somewhere uh, in Lisbon or set to ball, pardon, set to ball, uh, and uh, you will join us, uh, you are joining us online. Uh, your academic approach is incredible. Uh, thank you. Uh, I need to say thanks, Eva. Uh, your always very positive attitude. Uh, it makes sense and, and we understand. Okay, brilliant. Uh, job is done. Uh, on time is done. And uh, no, no, yeah, thanks. Uh, I need to say thanks uh, to our colleagues from Altum. That's uh, if you are somewhere here. Huge thanks to you because without your support, uh, financial part, uh, well, we wasn't able to build actually. 
I need to say, say thanks uh, to our Italian colleague, Giovanni Valentina. Uh, your work and also Alessandro, who is somewhere uh, in other side of screen, uh, because without uh, your pushing us, how uh, we need to uh, disseminate our results, nothing happens. Uh, I also need to say thanks to our Lithuanian colleagues uh, from company Entry, uh, especially for the first uh, stage of developing process and defining requirements. Your 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 uh, effort was incredible, uh, very clear, uh, and uh, you know your how you defined uh, requirements. Nobody else uh, did from our side actually. Uh, it was a big pleasure to work with you. Uh, as we call it sometimes, it's our Lithuanian girls. It's not completely uh, fact because some boys also worked in this company, but still, uh, I hope I mentioned everybody. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah. I also need to say in one moment uh, our consortium was a bit uh, on other companies with other structure, but in the first stages also was really helpful. But no, life is life, changes is changes, and result we have. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is interesting case. They gave us opportunity later to invite also my friends to the new Yeah, that's true. Good. I'm ready to give floor for next person's headwords. Thank you, guys. Oh. You're great. Work. So there are many thank yous also in the chat and later on we'll be able to read those things and just in case if you have questions don't forget that at the final stage of this conference we're going to have q a session at the end and of course you'll be able to also follow up our discussions but now the next speakers are two both are from italy and today's world is, is hybrid so therefore for talking about NA and Skillman approach to digitalization and artificial intelligence for VET, which stands for vocational, educational, and training. We, with warm welcome, we want to welcome Skillman president, Giovanni Crisona, who is here in place today here. Hello, Giovanni. Yeah. yeah. And Mr. Mr. Filippo Del Nino, who is from European Training Foundation, also from Italy and probably now in Torino. So gentlemen, please. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, and the, the microphone is on, it's here. Yeah. Uh, Filippo, are you? I'm here. To share your screen. I don't see you here, but I don't know. Ah, yeah. Okay, you can share your screen. Just a small introduction uh, before Filippo start to work. We divide this uh, uh, speech in two parts. There is the, the European Training Foundation before, the most important. And then I will introduce the connection of Skillman Network with the Kabada tool and what we have uh, uh, already presented here this morning. So Filippo, the floor is yours. If you can share your screen, I see one chat, uh, Sabina Sella, it probably is not the screen that you would like to share. No, I, th I actually thought that you would have shown the presentation. Can you hear me? Yeah, what did you say? Sorry. I thought that you would have shown the presentation. Your presentation? Yeah. Ah, okay. Otherwise, I will retrieve it. This was not expected, sorry. Don't worry, I'm, takes a I'm second. Trying. I'm going to test it. No, 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 I, uh, I'll open it. Sorry? It is? 
Okay, you have your presentation, but I also found that you. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry for not being present. Um, I would have liked a lot to be there with you. Uh, the topic is very high interest for me, and 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 I'm really willing to uh, study this experience of Kabada and potentially use it for our network. ETF and Skillman has a, a strong cooperation, so uh, I think this is a is a big opportunity to 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 work together on this new topic of artificial intelligence. This is one of the first experience, and uh, I think is a very powerful one, and. Uh, I, th I think we, I would really like to build on it. So what is uh, ENA? ENA is the ETF Network for Excellence. It's a network of, or oh, now it's 258 Central Vocational Excellence. You can see here the, the uh, origin of the country. So we have uh, uh, 74 from uh, European Union, uh, more than 150 from our partner countries, and uh, even 30 uh, central vaccines from uh, sub Saharan Africa, one from Philippines, and three from Switzerland. We are active in a number of areas. Uh, I don't go through all of them, of course, just to mention that we have one which is specifically on digitalization. We call it NDG, it focuses on digitalization of teaching and learning. When we talk about digital technologies for education and training lifelong learning, we mainly refer to a number of issues. So is we look at it through four lenses. The objectives of learning, which would is to, to simplify is what we call the what, and then is uh, the how, the tools for support learning and the tools to support teaching. And that's what I would like to focus today in terms of trends. So in terms of what, uh, we mainly refer to the digital competence that learners have to uh, possess at the end of a study period, and also the digital components of the qualifications. So what, uh, what is changing in terms of digitalization for the different occupations? So these are the two elements. In terms of what, what we are going to focus more and more is the uh, focus on digital competence for everyone, not only for students. So the DGN uh, initiative is going to focus in 2023, 2024, mainly on lifelong learning and on uh, the developing, establishing digital competence for everybody. So this is going to be the trend. This is going to be what we're going to focus on. The second component, we perfectly know, there's no, there's no way to play around it, is artificial intelligence. Uh, is something powerful, is something new. I mean, if you are in artificial intelligence, you 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 expected it coming since a few years. If you were not in artificial intelligence, I think it's quite surprising. The level of artificial intelligence is already active now. So this is the new trend. We have to work on it. We have to focus on it. In terms of the what, what is going to change is the integration of artificial intelligence in DigiComp which is the European Union framework for digital competences. It is European, is used worldwide, is very well done. It defines what are the digital competences that uh, students, but also adults have uh, put, need to possess to be active in the labor market. And this has to be adapted to artificial intelligence. And the second component, which is even more important, is how artificial intelligence is going to change the occupational standards. So there's a number of uh, occupational standards going to be completely revolutionized from artificial intelligence. Jobs are changing, jobs are falling. Uh, we already see in the big uh, IT industries that there were like 100,000 people fired in, in, in the last few months. Part of it is because of artificial intelligence. So I think this is, is the big trend, is very powerful. We don't have to look at it as, as a risk, we have to look at it as an opportunity. However, if you don't act, it's going to be very, very dangerous. So this is something that we plan to work. Uh, uh, we would like really to work in cooperation with Skillman on this topic. And this is going to be the trend that starts now and we'll probably invest even more in 2024. In terms of how, which is basically how you use digitalization for to support the digital education, <coughs> teaching and learning process. Um, the big trend is again is artificial intelligence 
we are moving from non AI based application to AI based application. It changes everything in how you do things. Now, education is a conservative environment. The first reaction is always against. I mean, you have different different uh, uh, contexts where uh, AI has been banned, like New York schools have banned use of AI for their students. Uh, is it a risk? A very small yes, in the sense that I mean, in the in the short term, students can use it to avoid actually working, which means also lack of learning. But in a, most of it is an opportunity. It is a huge opportunity to improve educational system. This is something that we have to force on the education system. Uh, it's, a, it's a big change. It's an even bigger change than digitalization per se, which was forced for <coughs> uh, was forced on education to uh, from COVID. Uh, so it it is it's going to be difficult, but we have to do it. Uh, it has a number of added value: the introduction of artificial intelligence education processes. Uh, personalized learning, automatic grading, adaptive learning, predictive analysis, tutoring. So, I mean, I don't go through all of these. This is basically, these answers is the one provided by ChatGDP. So you might say there's a conflict of interest, <laughs> but uh, overall, uh, I fully agree that AI can enhance the education process by providing individualized instruction, automating repetitive tasks and providing real-time feedback. So, I mean, <clears throat> Uh, this is something which is happening. I mean, you have already uh, pioneered uh, the use of artificial intelligence. Uh, we cannot we cannot wait. The more we wait to introduce in, in uh, education and the more we are losing generations out on the labor market without the competence that they need. Because now in the labor market, in a few years, they will expect these uh, people to have this competence. If you don't have you will just simply not be able to perform the task that's going to be asked to you. So we need to introduce them. We need to assess these competences and we need to develop and use uh, <clears throat> tools which are based on AI. So this is for me is, is the only thing which is uh, the priority now when we talk about digitalization and uh, education. And I really look forward to build on your experience uh, and to partner with Partner with Skillman on this topic. Thank you very much, Filippo. I think for me it's clear, but now I would like to help uh, our friends from uh, Remote Connection and in the room here to understand how we will collaborate. So I will start to share my screen and uh, I will uh, um, introduce uh, going uh, more deep into particulars how we are going to deploy the post uh, effects uh, um, Kabada project. So how we bring to, to dissemination after the end of the project uh, uh, to concrete uh, solutions within the collaboration among the Skillman network and uh, the N network. So there's, uh, uh, I don't know, Filippo, if I can say sister networks, uh, probably we started a little bit before, but then any also overpassed us. Um, yeah. We are a network founded in 2014 that is composed by universities, most uh, most uh, vocational education and training centers, a chamber of commerce, ministries, regional authorities, and so on. So we are focused to the development of skills on advanced manufacturing. Then the any network arrived. Uh, more recently, but they also have this consistent uh, uh, composition, and we have matched together to have common targets, to have common, uh, to have collaborations, and we have the idea to bring on uh, some uh, uh, relevant uh, principles for us, and what uh, Filippo has presented is the uh, daily work that we do. We collaborate, for example, on a digital triathlon initiative that is a friendly competition among uh, providers or anyway uh, users of solutions in digitalization for education and so on. So which is the Skillman initiative for entrepreneurial learning that we share with the N network and that will bring to the light the Kabada tool to a uh, wide, uh, wide uh, public uh, of our 95 countries in the world, the Skillman Network, plus the other uh, 
very big number of members from the ADN network of the European Union ETF. So uh, in, in our, um, in our uh, context, in the Skillman network, we have, uh, um, sorry, we have uh, a sub-network, uh, I could say, that is called uh, uh, Entrepreneurs Mobility. It is a, is a compos composed by, uh, is a, not a large network, but is something that uh, uh, is uh, composed by organizations that uh, work exactly to develop the entrepreneurial learning or to facilitate, I would say, the, uh, the access to new entrepreneurs to, to the market. So this is a network that uh, um, is uh, distributed in only 10 countries, not all our countries, but this is a very significant uh, tool that we can implement as a schema network to allow any one of our members to access to Kabada and to propose the, uh, the use of Kabada to the final beneficiary. So this uh, uh, network is composed by relevant organizations uh, and even very famous, probably, probably you know the uh, mobile uh, uh, world capital of Barcelona Mobile World Capital that organizes an annual event with thousands of people. And this is one of the members of this uh, sub-network. And all these partners will be engaged using in diffusing the Kabada tool using uh, the funds of uh, Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs Program of the European Commission with a four years contract that uh, will start now uh, from February 23 until February uh, 27. So uh, this is a program for the ones that are not informed that uh, provide on the job training for new small uh, medium enterprise entrepreneurs to facilitate a successful uh, start and development of their business idea. So it's clear that this is the, uh, the, the reason why Kabada tool is extremely interesting for, for this, uh, this job, this work. And then uh, with this um, European program, the consortium uh, facilitate exchanges of experiences and information uh, between the entrepreneurs uh, and uh, to facilitate them, them to, uh, their, uh, to face the obstacles and the challenges to starting up and developing uh, uh, their own uh, business. Then uh, the consortium supports uh, to enhance market access and uh, identification of uh, potential partners and new uh, and established business. And finally, uh, through this uh, supporting uh, program, the consortium helps the, uh, the new entrepreneurs on building uh, knowledge and experiences from other countries. So it's an exchange program that uh, works very well. We have already with this uh, sub-network facilitated over 1,500 small medium enterprise entrepreneurs using the uh, Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs funds and uh, we have given supports for business ideas. So it can be, this program, a valuable opportunity for university also and uh, vet students. This is the reason why today we will have uh, this important guest for Ogre Technical School and from the Ministry of Education here in Latvia. Um, these uh, graduates can uh, wish to achieve, to achieve uh, entrepreneurial uh, skills through a mobility exchange, and we are there to help, and we are there to propose to the use of uh, Skillman, uh, sorry, Kabada tool to uh, start with this exchange because they have to define their own uh, business idea. So I'm going to end this short presentation. This will be done in an authentic uh, context because the uh, travel and the stay abroad is concretely in a real enterprise to make real business in an authentic uh, context. The uh, exchanges uh, with uh, successful host entrepreneurs uh, allow the new entrepreneurs uh, to strengthen uh, their entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, this is important because we, we wish to provoke uh, entrepreneurial mindset uh, with the use of Kabada 
and also going abroad, they can uh, support the uh, growing of uh, soft skills, increasing their adaptability to an international labor market. Uh, the continuous exchange with an experienced entrepreneur, I would say, allow the new entrepreneur to better understand his personal career and opportunity in strong connection with uh, the study curriculum. So it's very important for universities and vet providers. And uh, I would say that uh, this is the uh, natural uh, ambient for the Skillman and the N network that collects such many number of institutes. I think I have uh, finished on this. And uh, today I will introduce uh, the continuation of this concept on how we integrate all the aspects together with the N network, our system network, and how we focus for this year some specific topic that is related, related to Kabada. So today we will go through all these points and we will take uh, just one on digitalization in particular, as uh, Filippo said, that is one of our uh, main tracks, and we will go deep into the argument uh, analyzing how the VET providers can valorize, like the universities, the use of Kabada tool. I have ended for this moment. Filippo, I don't know if you want to add something, please. I would like to say there's people who talk about digitalization and innovation like me, and there's people who do it, people who does it. And uh, so thank you very much for creating Kabada and uh, and and for giving us opportunity to 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 play with it thank you very much thank you ciao filippo ciao thank you for being really operative and professional uh really great content and as you heard from filippo and giovanni we're going to continue in a minute uh, and of course, we're going to follow up on the moderator sessions. And now currently, I want to uh, tell the next speaker for 15 minutes is going to talk about self-reflection on entrepreneurship, experience and the role of Kaba the tool. And with warm welcome, please, uh, let's see the next speaker from Mendel University in Brno in Czech Republic. It's Eva Abramushkinova Pavlikova. So all floor is yours. So thank you for coming. Warm applause. Welcome applause, please. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being part of Kabada team. Uh, I would like to uh, introduce experience from my institution and uh, I will just show you what is the outline of my presentation. But <laughs> can I use this one or why it doesn't work? Or I can use only. Can I see it for a moment, please? It works, it works. Yeah. So, uh, just briefly information uh, about uh, Mandel University, my faculty, and mainly about uh, experience with Kabada tool in a sense of survey and also uh, qualitative statements from our students. Uh, Mendel University is located in Czech Republic and uh, Brno is the second biggest city after Prague. Maybe you didn't know that uh, it's the fourth popular, the most popular student city as students experienced. I'm sure um, Riga will be also somewhere on uh, on these places, but in reality, Brno is really a student city. So we have a lot of students and also more uh, institutions than only Mandel University. If you wonder where the name comes from, it's uh, after founder of genetics, Johann Gregor Mendel. And this is the campus, which is located a little bit outside of the center, which contains more faculties. And this is uh, the core of my presentation to explain how Kabada tool can be used for students uh, who are not specifically focused on management or economics. So uh, in total, Mental University has about 10,000 students. 
you see different numbers for different faculties. I come from the Faculty of Forestry and Wood Technology, but of course uh, we have also Faculty of Business and Economics with, for example, 4,000 students. Uh, as for uh, our faculty, we have 13 departments, and I will just shortly mention um, the areas of study. So you can imagine that Kabada tool can be really used also by students who focused on completely different uh, disciplines. Uh, you see here um, forest management, soil science, wood products, dendrology, ecology, wildlife management. Uh, you see also silviculture, wood processing, wood science. Uh, we have uh, undergraduate, graduate, and also postgraduate studies, including furniture design, landscaping, uh, wood technology, and many uh, areas where students prepare for different types of professions, not only uh, as employees, but as we know from the survey, by the way, also becoming an entrepreneurs. We have also forest ecology, forest phytology protection, very special uh, areas on different level, as you can see, silviculture, uh, engineering, mechanization, wood processing. Um, we also, we as a university own also a forest, which is quite special and it's a unique for our students to, to get training in this forest. So it's part of uh, some study areas and it's quite unique and also popular for international students because not every university is owner of quite big forest, which is about 30 minutes from Brno. Uh, all of you probably know what Kabada tool is about, so I don't have to uh, repeat, but the third point uh, that's our uh, mission that we really believe that this tool uh, can be used uh, for um, gaining skills uh, in areas which are in the center of attention for our students. Uh, it doesn't have to be only forestry management, also design and other uh, subjects which, uh, which you um, saw. Uh, this is the structure of Kabada tool, but you already know that it has uh, six large blocks and we wanted our students to try the tool and uh, you probably know that uh, in autumn when the tool was finished there was a series of webinars with the help of your local team and uh, Chris Tapps, so thank you very much for this cooperation, where on dif in different countries the tool was introduced and we were one of these institutions. Uh, so um, the aim of these webinars was to introduced shortly the tool and uh, we gave our students a survey before using the tool and after the tool to see if this first experience with uh, Kabada tool has some influence on their perception of entrepreneurship and um, in addition to this we also had qualitative part to this survey asking students for written statements, how was the tool beneficial for them and if they could give us some kind of feedback. So the basic aim was to uh, find out what is the self-assessment of students, how do they perceive what they think, and uh, if we can see some change. Short note about the sample of students for this uh, pre-survey. Of course, it's not easy to organize in a teaching uh, semester. So from the opportunities and our courses which we had, we have selected students from uh, Czech Republic, but we have also international students. So you see also variety of students from different countries, which was indeed very interesting to get feedback also from them, especially the qualitative one. The gender was uh, almost 50-50. Uh, the age group, of course, they are university students, so it's mainly between 18 and 25, but especially from international students, we have also 26 plus students, which is maybe a little bit different from other institutions. As for the study area, you understand that we mainly focus on natural sciences, 
So uh, we had the core of the group made from undergraduate students, meaning bachelor's level, uh, studying natural sciences, uh, engineering, also some information technologies. And uh, these subjects, which you see like business management, administration, these are mainly international students coming from other faculties because we provide our courses also for other faculties. So it's a mixture of students, but the, big, the, the biggest group are uh, students from the Czech Republic. Uh, here I am following the, quest, the survey questions which you uh, saw already in uh, Yanis' presentation, some of them. So uh, these are uh, the issues which were the most uh, interesting for us and I'm not presenting everything, but I selected only the questions which are for this audience the most important. We could see that 85% had no entrepreneurship training or study course before. So already here you can see that this is basically zero knowledge. Uh, they could decide on a scale uh, from one till seven. And uh, when we evaluated, we selected uh, the level of students who consider themselves to be average in terms of knowledge, then better than average, but for lower level, you see that uh, this is the most uh, prevalent for this uh, group of students. When we ask about the knowledge of entrepreneurship, and here we, here we have the survey before and after introducing Kabada tool, you can see that uh, there is effect of experience with Kabada tool. And even the number of students which we had wasn't very big one, you see that the increase was from 30 to 64 percent, which which I think is a great success. So congratulations. <laughs> uh, another set of questions was about the intention to become an entrepreneur. And here you see increase from 60 to 78 percent after Kabada experience. We don't have to go into details. But with the small numbers, I think there is uh, evidence that for this type of students, it really makes sense. Another question was about experience. Uh, these students which we uh, asked, really they had none or ve very low experience with entrepreneurship. Uh, the one which is very experienced, uh, usually students from Africa, they are used to have some kind of business. So. It's that one and actually it's a female, <laughs> interesting. Uh, entrepreneurship could fulfill my life. That was one of the questions. And this is interesting feedback for us. 73% of students actually count with the possibility to, have to be entrepreneurs. But basically they don't have any experience and any skills. So. Here, this is information that it is a target group. Also students who don't study management and business, they will become at a certain point in life entrepreneurs from these areas which I'm presenting. And of course, after introducing Kabada tool, it's even higher. So when they know more, they even more think that they could, uh, that this could fulfill their life. If it's interesting for me, again, 75% of students have some kind of interest, but they don't have experience. But after introducing Kabada, the interest is uh, even higher. Of course, we had small numbers, so also the increase in percentages is smaller. Uh, the next question, if starting an entrepreneurship would be easy, uh, you see that the majority uh, disagreed. So they know it's not easy for them. But if they experience Kabada tool, they are more positive, which is also another sign that they grow with Kabada experience, they get knowledge and they are more self-confident. Planning, that was a difficult question, um, which was about understanding how to plan an entrepreneurship about risk and data management and how to develop products, plan resources and engage needed partners. And here you see that 
uh, after Kabada experience from 87 until 69, uh, here we also see very positive influence and here as well. So having experienced Kabada tool, uh, it gives students more knowledge. For the, for the last one, uh, probably they would need more time because it's uh, about developing products, planning resources uh, and so on. And I could continue like this, um, stating that this Kabada tool really had a positive influence. Uh, students also consider entrepreneurship as a socially significant activity. This was more or less similar before and after, which is also important sign about new generation and young entrepreneurs. And in conclusion, uh, definitely, even this was quite small sample, the influence was uh, very positive. Um, the detailed uh, explanation of the survey uh, is an article which is uh, under review now uh, in cooperation with my colleague Yitka from Mandelu and Kristap. So hopefully uh, this will be in details uh, also published. And I will conclude with a statement from students. You can read how they enjoyed this activity. Um, this is uh, congratulations to Kristaps and the team because they also found it quite exciting. Uh, this is a sign that it's not only for young people, but also for experts, also for people who have basic knowledge and also advanced. So basically it's, a, it's for everybody. It doesn't have to be only for young people. Uh, this is stating that for somebody, it was really first contact with business and it was easy and understandable. So it was easy to follow. Uh, super useful, very good application people for study, uh, good for people who study economics, but also for people from other areas. Very impressive, very functional, definitely planning to use in the future. Uh, one stop shop for modeling the whole business. This is a, one of the quotations given by students. Uh, young entrepreneurs who want to know more and also for people who don't know anything, uh, aspiring seasoned entrepreneurs uh, full of business concepts and strategies, excellent digital service, easy to use, very good and professional. And uh, this is a story uh, from the African uh, businessman uh, who said that while using a tool, she actually realized how much more information in detail she needs when she wants to open a business. So this was a feedback for free pages, which we received, that actually it made her think what everything she needs to develop if she wants to have successful business. This is just a start of, uh, of the quote, but uh, here you can see that it was very effective for this lady. Uh, of course, not everything is perfect and we can always improve. And this is something what we were recommended. The first note is related to technical side, I think, the time for data downloading. Uh, but the next one, it's something for another project, I think, that we are focusing only on Europe, but especially international students would like to go beyond the borders of Europe. So also Turkey, Asia, Africa, something what we should think about. But in general, I think we succeeded. And uh, thank you very much for everybody who got involved that uh, this opportunity is really useful also to non-business students. And it was our pleasure to be part of the team. Thank you. Thank you. And the uh, next speaker is going to talk about experience and the feedback that users got when testing the tool of Kabada. And with warm welcome, we at distance in online, we have professor from Department of Economics and Management, Dolce Matos Calio from Portugal, uh, Polytechnic Institute of Setubal. So warm welcome, everyone. And uh, Dolce Matos, can you hear me well? And you're, you can share the screen. And with warm welcome, we all welcome you here.
Hi, everyone. Good morning. I hope you are seeing my, my screen now. Yes. Okay. Uh, so greetings from Portugal. Uh, my name is Dulce. Uh, I come from the Polytechnic Institute of Setúbal. And uh, as well as Eva, I'm going to talk about the experience of the users when testing Kavada tool, although uh, in a, a different perspective. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, I would like to uh, explain who we are, uh, then uh, I'm going to explain the, uh, the tests of Kabada tool, the findings and the conclusions. Um, who we are? We are a higher education institution in the public sector education. Uh, we are uh, in Setúbal uh, and Barreiro districts. Uh, Setúbal is uh, 40 kilometers far from Lisbon. Um, we are one of the most beautiful bays of the world. That's why I put this, this photo here. Um, we have two campuses in the Polytechnic. Uh, one is Setúbal on the left, uh, and the other is Barreiro uh, on the right. Um, about the teaching areas, um, we have uh, technology, uh, two schools of technology, uh, a school of healthcare, a school of education, and uh, the school of business administration, uh, where I come from. Uh, about uh, our courses, uh, besides uh, some short cycle technical degrees, we have uh, higher education mainly, uh, so uh, undergraduates and master courses, and we also have lifelong learning, namely postgraduate diplomas, training courses, and certified training. Uh, last school year, uh, we had more than 8,000 uh, students. Um, this is our School of Business Administration um, and uh, our undergraduate courses uh, are uh, in the area of accountancy and finance, uh, human resource management, marketing, logistics and retailing management and information systems management. Uh, we also have master courses uh, of data science, information systems, business sciences, uh, and so on, uh, mainly uh, on business administration, but also uh, occupational health, uh, hospitality, uh, hospitality management, uh, and so on. Uh, well, um, I would like to share our experience uh, of working uh, on Kavada tool um, and uh, mainly, uh, um, as Eva already told, uh, we had uh, some workshops, uh, the online workshops and the theoretical workshops. Uh, one was in October, uh, another one uh, in November, and then another one in December. Um, and I would also like to uh, congratulate Chris Tapps for the great workshops uh, that we had. Um, we involved uh, master students, um, uh, especially from uh, the, the master in marketing management, uh, business sciences and information systems management. Uh, and we also had teachers and staff linked with the field of entrepreneurship um, participating uh, on these workshops. Um, so, um, the, the experience that, that I'm sharing today um, is about uh, the, uh, working uh, on the tool. Um, we had uh, 44 participants of these two master uh, courses, um, and um, we had a, a case study uh, besides, besides the, the sessions uh, that were um, led by Christophs. Uh, then we developed a case study, uh, an exercise on class from December to January. Um, and uh, we involved uh, 40 participants uh, of uh, these two master courses. 
um, it was uh, besides those uh, surveys uh, that uh, Eva mentioned, um, after completion of the exercise, uh, we also had uh, an anonymous questionnaire, um, mainly to understand um, not only um, what was before and after, uh, but also uh, what was their experience, uh, the strengths and the weaknesses of the tool uh, in their perspective, in the perspectives of, of the students. Uh, so um, this is the, um, uh, the characterization of our students. 50% uh, uh, come from business management, administration, and economics. Um, and uh, the others come from accountancy, finance, engineering, information systems, and then uh, in a lower uh, percentage, law, tourism and hospitality, healthcare and social welfare, and mathematics. Uh, presently, um, most of them are studying business sciences and the others are studying information systems management. Uh, most of them uh, work, uh, so uh, they are studying and they are working, um, and some of them um, are uh, already entrepreneurs, uh, only a small percentage, but some of them uh, have their own business. Um, most of the students are Portuguese students, uh, but we also have uh, a significant percentage of students from Brazil, uh, from uh, Angola, from Mozambique, uh, Cabo Verde, um, and other uh, African uh, countries. Um, so uh, this is um, our uh, uh, our. Uh, kickoff uh, of the questionnaire. Uh, we wanted to know uh, their knowledge, their intention, uh, their previous experience uh, in entrepreneurship, and also if their interest in entrepreneurship increased through the use of Kavada. Um, and we use this scale from one to seven, uh, where one is the lowest and seven is the highest. Um, and um, this is our um, our um, uh, our results, uh, the, the average of uh, knowledge uh, and intention are uh, four or uh, higher than four. Uh, previous experience uh, about uh, three and uh, interest in entrepreneurship um, uh, also, about three. Um, how useful were the sections uh, of Kababa business plan for our students? Um, well, SWOT analysis uh, was the one that scored highest, um, but also uh, uh, the analysis of industry risks, uh, the industry statistics and risks, the business model canvas, uh, the financial projections and the artificial intelligence, uh, all of them were considered useful um, or very useful uh, for the students. Uh, but what was really highest was SWOT analysis. Um, so then we asked um, for uh, the strengths of the tools, of the tool uh, and the weaknesses of the tool. Um, the main strength that they pointed uh, is uh, uh, are, are the are those. Uh, it's a easy to use and easy to understand tool. This was the most um, common uh, answer. Um, then uh, also uh, they thought that information is organized and synthetic. Um, they liked the market and risk analysis, uh, thought that uh, indicators are useful and well presented uh, and also grouped by areas, uh, which is something uh, that they, they really appreciated. Um, and uh, then they referred the SWOT analysis, the business model canvas, uh, and also the fact that information is concentrated on one platform. 
uh, that is something that is not very common um, and uh, everything is um, uh, is perceived uh, in a framework um, and um, the, the the usefulness of the external strategic analysis um, then uh, they also referred that it helps to create business plan uh, the graphical interface uh, the, the fact that the platform uh, allows several analyses uh, just in one place, the financial projections, uh, the interactivity and the intuitive tool, the structure of the business plan. Uh, they thought uh, it was an uh, updated and innovative tool and um, the information is reliable. Um, then we just want answer. Um, they mentioned it's quick to obtain results, the internal strategic analysis. Uh, there is plenty of general information on the European level. Uh, it's possible to test several solutions. It's a free platform. Uh, the visualization of industry data and the potential of the tool. Uh, as to the weaknesses of the tool, uh, the most common uh, one uh, was that uh, uh, the information for some industries is limited or uh, non-existent. Uh, and uh, some of them also referred that information and topics are too generalist. Um, there is also limited information for some countries. Uh, as Eva uh, also uh, mentioned, um, we have some, some uh, students from Africa and from Brazil. Uh, so, um, uh, because our tool uh, focuses essentially on the European level, uh, this is um, a limitation for them. Uh, it's only available in English. Um, some of them mention it is not very intuitive or user-friendly, uh, difficult to handle for research. The database is insufficient and uh, bugs. Um, this is um, this refers to uh, the uh, the testing on uh, November and December. Um, and finally, um, uh, only uh, just just one answer. Uh, it could be more integrated, uh, the limited information for industry segments, uh, too focused on industry, uh, outdated information for some industries, difficult to use financial data, uh, especially in complex businesses, um, uh, project management uh, and financial area, it's not very well known, and the industry analysis. Um, this, um, this was also mentioned just by one, uh, one respondent uh, that sometimes the platform could not be accessed. Um, it does not work when we don't remember the passwords, uh, still underdeveloped, uh, stability of the platform and difficult to import data. I would like to uh, point out that, that um, those uh, weaknesses referred to the first testing of the tool um, in the early phase uh, of the tool. Um, well, um, I also uh, tried to, to figure out if um, the, the strengths of the tool uh, are uh, different uh, for those who have high knowledge and low knowledge of entrepreneurship, uh, but there was no difference. Uh, everybody mentioned uh, the same strengths. Um, about the weaknesses, um, there, there is a difference uh, between those who have high knowledge of entrepreneurship, uh, those students uh, think that the topics are too generalist, um, and this is uh, understandable because uh, most of them um, know a lot of entrepreneurship uh, and also have uh, their own businesses. Uh, for those who have low knowledge of entrepreneurship, uh, they, they mentioned that the database is insufficient. Um, uh, and um, well, this is uh, related uh, with um, the, those uh, limitations of uh, countries uh, and, and some industries. 
Um, I also try to understand if uh, things differ uh, with the intention to become an entrepreneur. Uh, and those who have a high intention to become an entrepreneur uh, mentioned that uh, indicators are useful and well presented, uh, information is organized and synthetic, those who have low intention to become an entrepreneur um, uh, say that uh, it helps to create business plan um, and also uh, mentioned market and risk analysis. Uh, about the weaknesses, uh, there were no differences um, according to the intention to become an entrepreneur. Um, so, um, about the high-ranked sessions, uh, those who have a high knowledge of entrepreneur uh, of entrepreneurship um, uh, score highest on the analysis of industry statistics and risks. Those who have low knowledge of entrepreneurship um, especially liked uh, the business model canvas, uh, followed by SWOT analysis. Um, and uh, uh, for the, the low-ranked sessions of the tool, um, everything um, was uh, common, um, the, uh, the financial projections and artificial intelligence. Um, and um, with the intention to become entrepreneur, think, uh, things were uh, similar. Um, about uh, the intention to become entrepreneur, entrepreneur um, with the uh, um, low ranked sessions, uh, there was only a difference uh, between the, the first and the second uh, highest ranks, but uh, uh, it was not, uh, there was not um, a big uh, difference. Um, so the conclusions. Um, all the sections of the tools uh, were useful or very useful to develop a business plan. Uh, all of them scored uh, on average four or highest. Uh, main strengths of the tool, easy to use, easy to understand. Information is organized and synthetic. Indicators are useful and well presented, uh, as well as grouped by areas. Um, about the weaknesses of the tool, uh, the information for some industries, uh, the information uh, or topics uh, are too generalist and limited information for some countries. Uh, in general, um, the, they mentioned uh, it was a, a very uh, interesting tool. They were really excited about it. Uh, and they, uh, all of them said that they intend to continue to use the tool. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Dolce Matos Coelho. So now we continue with AI, which is really, really modern abbreviation standing for you can imagine what. But yeah, really important is to talk about integral part for today's education and the use of artificial intelligence. And from Art Smart Company, one of the uh, also team members from Cabo the team with warm welcome. University Exchange, please tell us about the AI. Okay, um, hello everyone. So I'm Yuri Sirexting from ArtSmart. Um, in uh, 
our everyday life. Uh, we do make uh, learning uh, content, we do uh, make trainings, but uh, we quite a lot of times uh, do it in a digital way, digital trainings, e-learnings, e-trainings, and so on. So uh, to be success successful in this, uh, in this uh, field, uh, I also try to follow uh, trends uh, in digital learning and digital all the fuss and so on. And so the, one of the uh, main things, of course, is uh, artificial intelligence and or some other uh, words uh, that uh, uh, you, have to, you have to know uh if you want to follow and understand the basics of the issue so uh i'm a business person i'm not a coder or it person so uh i'm not doing i i'm not making it but i'm trying to use it so it's also a big difference so that uh also in education probably we all will not have to have to learn to code but uh, we have to learn to use uh, tools and uh, possibility, understand the possibilities, what it gives, and, uh, and uh, start to use. So I will try to shortly go through and give some examples and so. So uh, does it work? Okay. So uh, what is artificial intelligence? And uh, so basically, it's a concept or uh, that uh, machines or computers can do that what uh, we humans can do make a, uh, basically make decisions decide something what is good wrong or what to do further and so on um, then important it is uh, to understand that uh, although artificial intelligence could work without data so somebody makes pre-programs uh, pre uh, uh, algorithms and says what to do if something happens and like in Kabada case we also have a lot of what uh, if then if then if then but uh, to be more successful machines have to learn and so the next uh, uh, term uh, which uh, everyone has to remember is machine learning or abbreviation is ML so uh, basically whenever there is artificial intelligence there is also machine learning and uh, for machine learning to be successful and later on uh, artificial intelligence to be successful, there has to be data. If you have data, then every, uh, all the processes uh, will be, let's say, uh, good and successful. And uh, the third term is uh, deep learning. Um, so this is more complicated than machine learning. So it uh, takes, uh, goes deeper, can uh, analyze more unstructured data and then and, 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 and so on um somebody may ask a question i also had a question so why the hell we why do, why do we have a machine learning if we have deep learning but uh, the thing is that uh, deep learning is so complicated that it's in many cases machine learning is uh, good enough and so you don't spend uh, resources on more complicated things i think in cabadell it's also ml not dl <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, when we know um, basic uh, concepts and basic uh, a, a names uh, and definitions, so let's go and see uh, how can we use uh, them in education as trainers, lecturers, and as students. So let's start uh, as instructors as, or uh, lecturers. So uh, the first and very important thing is not to be afraid that there will be a robot that comes in place of you and says, okay, Yanis, please go to the blackboard and write an uh, equation. And okay, Yanis, your equation is good. You get mark 10, sit down. No, uh, this is not how it's uh, happening. Uh, so the main idea is that uh, uh, these technologies are coming to help uh, to better understand students and to do your work uh, more efficiently. So uh, personalized learning, learning. There are students that are uh, good at some topic, and then uh, there are students that are not so good. And then they switch. The one who is good in statistics, I was, for example, good in statistics. There were no problem for me in statistics. Then, when I had to write something, I, I my like uh, skills phew, fall down. And uh, well, 
and the instructor and lecturers, teachers change, and so they can't probably know who is bet good at what uh, subject. Uh, but uh, machine learning, if there is digital learning and so on, so they can learn it and understand, and then provide uh, more personalized content and speed of uh, learning. <clears throat> Automated grading. So. Uh, Maybe not all, everything, but a lot of uh, grading uh, task, uh, tasks also can be uh, performed by uh, machine learning, by AI, AI, AI. and uh, so it also helps teachers and instructors in their work. So th they don't spend time in grading, to, um, but they can uh, assist some students that need more help or uh, think about uh, some new content and so on. Um, educational data analysis, uh, it also goes with personalization so that uh, uh, systems can analyze uh, how students perform. They can see in which topics they spend more time or go more uh, for less. Um, there are even some, I don't know, systems that uh, scan the face of the student and it understands when, a, when, a, when it's like, a, boring when it's like super um, straight and so that they don't understand uh, by preparing the presentation I also like um, looked at some videos and there was one uh, Chinese it was actually quite I would say old it was pre-COVID pre uh, three years ago and uh, they have school where uh, kids are having uh, handbands with some neuron uh, checkers and they just analyze how concentrated they are on different tasks and then also can and teacher get uh, has a screen and uh, basically it is data what is coming in and uh, can be analyzed and said that there is in that corner somebody is not getting good because neurons are uh, working not not as they supposed to be so again uh, something that uh, at the end helps uh, teacher uh, for to student uh, to teach students more efficiently, <clears throat> uh, improve student engagement. Uh, I believe this is some something quite uh, also actual in uh, all wet, all like very practical uh, learning, and so that you can put on uh, these VR glasses and do all these practical things, make some uh, surgery or uh, welding or I don't know, any other very practical things in a classroom. And again, there are systems that analyze how successful or not uh, you were. And it becomes much more interesting. And uh, yeah, adaptive learning is the speed, uh, the co complexity, how uh, tasks are coming. <clears throat> okay. So uh, this is how IA can help uh, educators. Let's see what, what comes for students. And again, here, uh, as I will show one example about uh, some of you know, there is some past that uh, IA, AI will uh, take over students. Students will not do anything anymore and uh, some, some, some systems will do everything instead of them. Um, Again, I think it's a bit wrong. Uh, systems can help students uh, to, um, to learn faster, uh, to learn faster uh, new subjects, or I don't know, learn uh, subjects from other languages or understand things quicker and so on. So um, there are systems that can uh, summarize, that can give some definitions from uh, large amounts of information. They can quickly find you can, if the only thing is that students have to ask questions. So again, it's not that uh, system makes a presentation and sends it to the uh, to the teacher. Uh, systems help uh, to find information faster, to summarize it, and to consume it in a more understandable way so that probably student don't have to read a 30 page long report to find some two main features uh, they get it from uh, from the work of the system so again the uh, the same vr glasses so this is like uh doing things digitally practically 
in a practical way. So understanding uh, closest way how to understand how to do a practical thing uh, wearing these glasses. And again, there is a lot of data that can be analyzed and 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 and, and uh, uh, results and uh, suggestion given and so on. <clears throat> And uh, different student aids in uh, language learning, in uh, testing, and, and and so on, so that they on their own can uh, do some extra, uh, some extra uh, work or some extra preparation for exams, for uh, practical tasks, and uh, and so on. so quite a lot of things where it can help. Okay, and uh, yeah, I have two examples. Uh, some of you may know them, somebody not. If if there will be at least one who to whom it will be something new, so I will be very happy. So one is for uh, instructors or teachers, and the other is for uh, uh, okay. Sorry, um, advertisement. Actually, no. Really uh, sorry. From Cody Tolson, Egypt. Buckle up. This video is a trip. No. Ah, uh, sorry. Okay. I'm Phil Pavlin, a brand strategist. Welcome to my channel. Right now, technical advice to build your. No, no, no. Sorry, it's a. Well, yeah, I'm really, really, really excited for this video. Yes. First, that with synthesia to no. solve yeah, the yeah. possibility yeah, of yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Sorry. It's a commercial institution. <laughs> We're all for profits and income. That's why. No, no, the tool is the. Uh, Tool is the same. It just uh, the link uh, didn't update. Uh, so who knows Synthesia actually? Is there anyone who knows this this tool? Okay, then uh, it's worth finding uh, the real. Uh, so okay, this is the uh, the one which I wanted to show. What does it mean to be human? Where is the line between person and machine? Or does the line even exist? No idea. I'm here to tell you about some Fisha. Alan here has a lot to say and nothing but text to say it. Emails, presentations, tutorials, typing, typing, typing. It never ends. A giant steaming pile of text. It's just not as engaging to read as it is to watch and listen. But with Synthesia, Alan can take that text in just a few minutes, turn it into this. In today's lesson, you will learn about how to set up programming. He doesn't need a camera. He doesn't need a mic. All he needs are some words and a browser. Hello, Peggy. Hello. Alan would like to thank you. Who's this? With Synthesia, Alan can give anything a face and a voice, including his own. And with a little extra work, he can create a custom avatar who looks and sounds just like him. In this video, I will show some tips on how to connect more efficiently. Or sounds like him in a different language. Our CR system is a great source of information to learn. Uh, now it's easy for Alan to share anything he can type. Once you have the data, it is time to map the customer's journey for the purchase. Synthesia. Turning text into something much more human. Well, almost human. Okay, so. You normally are standing here in the lecture, so it was Zoom time, COVID time, and we were uh, standing in, uh, sitting in the front of uh, camera. Uh, this is the uh, I, AI uh, uh, led tool where you can make actually your own avatar. And the only thing uh, for your lecture, what you need is to type text, uh, to type content. And uh, well, yeah, you are. Here, lectures are in Latvian, uh, in Czech Republic, in Czech most probably. Some lectures are in English. As you said, this can be done, actually. You can make your lecture in 20 languages and so on. So uh, this is a tool, again, which can help you. Um, OK, maybe it will not like change that everyone is going home and sitting and making uh, 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 just vid uh, video avatars, but uh, for a blended uh, for blended uh, approach, uh, I think uh, very uh, uh, very interesting and uh, good. Okay, and 
uh, and uh, the second uh, tool which I wanted to show, I already know that at least two person in two persons in this room know it. Uh, it has caused uh, quite uh, fuss uh, in uh, in everywhere. Everyone is talking, and uh, uh, it has been prohibited in uh, in some regions. Um, so it's uh, Chat G GPT, and uh, basically it's a next level Google. Uh, it's a chatbot, but uh, you can ask uh, clever questions, and you can get uh, very good answers. Uh, I hope it will work as it's sometimes overloaded, as it's like uh, very everyone uh, speaks about it. And So. Yeah, so it's yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, and then basically, yeah. So it's uh, gives a very uh, structured content and uh, and yeah, and then and then uh, we can learn from it and uh, use as a material in learning. Actually, eighty percent of the presentation of the material which is in the presentation is coming from the uh my chat with uh the system and uh my feeling was that yesterday i made this presentation twice as fast as i would do it normally uh... okay so so yeah, basically that's all. And uh, I think this is something important that you have to keep in mind and remember that uh, systems will not replace you, but the people who use them will replace you. Replace you. So learn, use, and enjoy. Um, thank you, Yuri, for reminding about the importance of technology. And uh, now we're going for a break, 20 minute break, then at 12 and 10, we are back and how the things are going to be organized. We're going to have three wonderful workshops organized in parallel. So you can choose the rooms physically here in Banco Oak School in rooms on the second floor, 204, 205. We'll help you to show where the conference halls are and also in this main conference hall. And you can choose in this conference hall and also by the way, those who are online, you'll be freely able to choose the breakout rooms. You simply choose the room you're willing to go in, and there you'll have a workshop. First room will be future usage of Kabbalah in higher education, moderated by Christoph Slashinskis. Then on the second room in the physical world, 204, future usage of Kabbalah in, uh, no, future usage of Kabbalah in secondary and vocational education, moderated by Inga Olarova. And third room, or room 205, future usage of Kabada in business consulting, moderated by uh, Yuri Sari Extinction. And now let's have a break and see you online and also in the rooms. Thank you. <laughs>